Hi guys, my name is Dr. Butt and I'm one of the tutors here at WH Medical Courses and today we're going to talk about the differences between a rotator cuff injury and a frozen shoulder. So starting off with history, in a rotator cuff injury the patient will usually, usually describe a traumatic episode or a repetitive overhead movement that they do as part of their work or if they're athletes then as part of their athletic workout and the patient will also describe a dull achy pain which is present on using the arm or when they lie on it. The patient will also describe the presence of a painful arc and the pain will be present on specific movements. There will be worsening pain and stiffness, especially if there's a massive tear over the first few weeks. In terms of examination findings, a partial tear will permit active abduction once the pain is under control, but a complete, complete tear will not allow for active uh, abduction at all and instead the patient will produce a shrug type movement with that shoulder. In terms of management this again depends on a number of factors including the severity of the tear itself. So for example surgery may be recommended in a complete or large tear. Partial tear uh, management depends on several factors such as the patient's age, their activity etc. For example an elderly patient may not benefit from surgery, whereas a young patient who is physically active may be offered surgery as the uh, preferred treatment option. In terms of frozen shoulder, the onset tends to be more insidious. It's not a, a, usually an event that leads to it. However, it is more common in patients if there's a history of recent immobility of the arm, for example, with a fracture, or if they've recently had a stroke. And frozen shoulders are, are also more common in patients who have a background in of uh, hypertension, diabetes, or cardiovascular disease. Frozen shoulder will present as pain and stiffness that gradually worsens over a period of time, which and this usually leads to restriction of movement. Initially, the restriction is most noticed in external rotation. However, as time passes, the restriction of movement usually gradually spreads to all directions and all types of movements. Uh, so there is severe painful restriction of passive and active movements, especially external rotation when you examine the patient with a frozen shoulder. Management options are usually uh, conservative with analgesia, physiotherapy and steroid injections. So there you have it, a very brief overview of some of the differences in the presentation, examination findings and management options for rotator cuff versus frozen shoulder. Thank you.